Joachim Rucker heads the UN interim administration in Kosovo, which is due to come to an end on December the 10th. Kosovo became a UN protectorate in 1999 after UN forces drove Yugoslav troops out of the province. Okay. Kosovo, where ethnic Albanians make up 90% of the population, intend to declare independence from Serbia in the new year. Rucker spoke to Euronews about the past, present and future of the breakaway province. So Mr. Rucker, hello. Hi. When you took over the UN mission, there was at the time um, already a lot of criticism concerning the results of the mission. Economic problems remained, security uh, problems were not solved. Um, the issue of the, the status was dragging on. The criticism is still there, it seems. So how do you account for such uh, results or at least for such dissatisfaction amongst the po population of Kosovo? Well, there is no doubt that the people in Kosovo are tired and frustrated about the delays in the status process, about the inconclusiveness of the status process so far. When it comes to what ANMIC has achieved or has not achieved, I would uh, tend to say the glasses have full and not half empty, as you know. Over the past eight years, we have, uh, together with our partners in Kosovo, achieved to lay the foundations of a functioning democracy. You saw uh, the elections, which went uh, fine and according to all standards. The foundations also for a rule of law sector that is functioning and for a market economy that is functioning. And I think that's no small achievement. Regarding the elections, you have said it was good for the for a good sign for democracy. The Serbs don't agree with that. Well, the Serbs were under uh, Kosovo Serbs were under a lot of pressure uh, from Belgrade and some of their leaders uh, not to participate, and this uh, went as far as uh, intimidation and threats, and that's of course uh, of concern. Still, there was a better turnout of the Kosovo Serbs than in 2004. Amongst um, other criticisms, there have been allegations of corruption uh, regarding UN staff. Your own deputy, I think, has uh, said that he was under investigation. Um, Kosovo media say that you are under investigation. Do you, do you deny that? Well, when it comes to investigations, we have this Office of Internal Oversight in New York, and you should ask them what they are investigating. They are they're constantly investigating something in the missions worldwide. But you are not aware of what they're I'm doing? I'm not aware. I'm not aware. You don't know whether they're doing any they don't investigation? Tell me. They don't tell me. This is why you have to ask them. Okay. But your deputy knows about it? Yeah, but he has no, no real indications either what the investigation is about, for example. So. So I, I recommend that you turn to New York and ask them. What would you say is the future of the UN mission in Kosovo? Uh, some people say um, there, there are no plans, not even for 2008. Is that correct? Well, of course, the future of the mission depends on the status process and on the solution of the uh, status question. Uh, you know that the Troika process is now lasting until 10th of December. We hope that thereafter either in the Troika process or thereafter will have a solution very quickly. Then I assume there will be some sort of transition period from ANMIC to uh, the future authorities of Kosovo under the future status. So I do expect uh, to be out of here no later than next summer. What do you think um, the EU um, can do which hasn't been done or what, what is left to do for the, the, the next mission in, in Kosovo? Uh, basically I assume that future missions would be there to oversee the implementation of a future status settlement. And that's a different mandate from ANMIC because ANMIC, uh, as you know, is ultimately responsible still for um, practically everything in Kosovo. And that would be different in a future mission. There are talks about a partition between the Serb northern part of Kosovo and the rest of uh, Kosovo. In that case, uh, who will protect the Serbian enclaves? Well, I, I would like to uh, comment on your assumption that there, uh, there should be a partition. I'm not uh, saying there should be. I'm saying people well, speculate about it. Uh, I mean, I, I would like to stress that uh, partition was one of the things that the contact group, for good reason, excluded uh, at the beginning of the uh, status process. Uh, and of course, uh, we, we believe uh, in this principle and we think it would be a very, very bad idea to, to even think about partition. Um, having said that, the uh, so-called enclaves or the Serbian uh, villages and towns in the uh, south uh, of the river Ibar uh, are as much in a safe and secure uh, environment as uh, every other uh, village or town in Kosovo. Well, there is still 
fear in the Serb community. Well, there is concerns, but um, there is a plan on the table. I know it has not been accepted in the Security Council so far, but it's called the Atisari Plan, and it addresses exactly all of these concerns in a very detailed and specific way. Of course, one should also encourage the Kosovo Serbs and all those who uh, voice concerns to look at the solutions for, the, for, for, for those concerns. What will you most value and what will you most regret about this mission in Kosovo? Well, I, I value very much the, um, the um, way that the people in Kosovo believe in their future, despite uh, a lot of disappointments, despite a lot of setbacks. And I think we can all learn uh, from that. Uh, the uh, underlying confidence in, in their own future is something very admirable. And uh, this is something I will miss. I will not miss uh, the garbage that is uh, spread still too much outside of the uh, houses and the streets, and, uh, but uh, that will improve too, I'm sure. What will you do next, do you know? I don't know. you have a job? I don't think so. Okay. Thank you very much, yeah. Mr. Ruka.